Señor Alejandro, you loved that, did you not? So remember, next time you're going to be up here, you're going to do it in Spanish. Welcome to Central. Um, if you don't know, we are a Jesus church where everyone is welcome, where no one is perfect, but where everyone is loved and where anything is possible. Happy birthday, Doris. God's blessings on your 16th birthday. <laughs> you may allow her to drive the car now, David. <laughs> What a joy to have the, uh, the young people from CCS join us. As I said, to, good morning to them this morning. Uh, Mr. Bida said, do you know Pastor Aubrey? He said, yes, of course. He came to our class when we were in grade one and grade two. And I'm thinking, man, I'm getting old. <laughs> this is not cool. It is wonderful to see that, to see how these little ones that you see uh, in... Uh, Ms. Vanderspeck's class, and then they grow up, and now look at them. They're leading worship. Uh, you were such a blessing. Thank you. I just looked at you and just the way in which you so freely gave. And you're brilliant, so you are hired. Thank you. We'll see you next Sunday. <laughs> Father, in a moment as we break your word, and in a little while as we break bread, that is so amazing because we can just allow you to take over and speak into our lives. We're going to talk about the cost for us being able to be your children, living in your presence, singing to a holy God, but more than that, being able to walk into your holy presence. So in these moments, Lord, just just calm our minds and our hearts and allow your words to be spoken. Forgive your servant, Lord, for his failures are many. So you take over, please, and speak. In the precious name of Jesus, our Lord, we pray. Amen. So those who are visiting with us, we started a series last week called Then Sings My Soul. Um, Ted, if you got two more slides, I think we'll get to the one that says about today. Do you have it there? You don't? That's fine. Leave that one up there. That's perfect. But it's correct. We're doing a series called Then Sings My Soul where we are taking some of the older hymns and connecting the truths from those into Scripture. Um, where we're talking about who God is and what God does and what God has done for us in our lives. So if I don't start with the scripture immediately, don't worry. I'm going to the Bible. We're a Bible church. We'll get there in a second. Last week we started the series off by talking about amazing grace and we spoke about God's grace and we reminded ourselves that, thank you, Ted, there we go. We reminded ourselves that we are saved by God's grace, not because we are good. Because we ask the question, how good is good enough? I cannot be good enough uh, to work on my salvation. Salvation is a free gift that comes from God, that he gives freely. My salvation is not based on my goodness. My salvation is based on God's goodness and who God is and God's grace. Our focused uh, text for that Sunday was Ephesians 2.8. For it, it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. This is not of yourself. It is a gift of God. Our salvation is God's free gift. But I want to connect to that today and ask the question. But someone had to pick up the tab. Who paid for that? So Robert Lowry was struggling with that same question. He was a preacher and a songwriter. Nine, 18, 19, 1875, sat down and wrote the hymn that we're going to use a little later in the service where he asked the question in the first line. What can wash away 
my sin. Can you remember the answer of the second line? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And I know we've spoken about salvation. We've spoken about how important the blood of Jesus is. But sometimes we stop there. I just this morning want to take that a little further and talk about the blood. Not the gory stuff. About the symbolism. How amazing this symbol of the blood is. Because when the Bible speaks of the blood, it speaks of reconciliation. It speaks of being made new. It speaks of a new relationship with God. It speaks of opening the door to God's heart where we can walk right into God's heart. But here's the thing. We cannot understand the significance of the blood if we don't understand the seriousness of sin. And I know we don't like the word sin. People don't like it when you talk about sin. But here's the fact. The Bible speaks about that from page one right to the last page. And here's the sad fact. The one thing that can separate us from God is sin. Happened right at the beginning. Do you remember the story in Genesis? God created this beautiful world, created the garden called Eden, put Adam and Eve in there, said, it's all yours, enjoy, take care of this. Every day, God would come and hang out with Adam and Eve. Four o'clock in the afternoon, they'd sit down and have a cup of tea. Until that day when Adam and Eve decided they knew better than God. What happened that afternoon when God came to visit? They hid. Because what does sin do? Sin do. It separates. It scares. So they're hiding away from God. Here's the saddest thing. Not only does it break the relationship between me and God, also breaks those most intimate relationships. Can you remember when Adam woke up and he saw Eve sang that first love song? Bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, one just like me. Give me a kiss. And in the moment sin came in, what was the first thing he said? It's that woman that you gave me. That's what sin does. It separates. It breaks. So God came and God says, let me give you a way of reconciling when you have done this with me. And in the Old Testament, he says, so bring a sacrifice. Now, the sacrifice for sin was a little different than the others. They would bring the best animal they had. That animal would be burned completely. It wasn't like the others where they only did a little bit of fat and the rest went to the priests and the Levites because, of course, they didn't have a job or they didn't work for their money. They got from what came into the temple. This one, they burnt the whole animal. But here's the cool part, and I'm going to come back to this, so put it in the back of your mind. They would catch the blood in a little bowl, and then they would take a hyssop, branch and they would dip it in the blood and they would sprinkle the blood around the altar while this was happening. Why? Because the blood was a symbol of being reconciled with God. Let me, let me tell you that, read you what it says. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. For the life of a creature is in the blood and I've given it to you to make atonement for yourselves on the altar. It is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. For the life of the creature is in its blood, and it is the blood that makes atonement for one's life. The Hebrew word for atonement is a very cool word. It's the word kafar. Kafar means to cover, to cover over so that when it is covered, you cannot see what is covered under that. That's what the blood does. It covers. It covers over the stuff that we don't want God to see and that God does not want to see. And it brings reconciliation. That's where that beautiful word comes from, from the Day of Atonement. Do you know what it's called in Hebrew? heard it often, Yom Kippur, from Kafar, the Day of Atonement. What happened on the Day of Atonement? You can read that, uh, Leviticus 16. On the Day of Atonement, it happened once a year only, the high priest went into the Holy of Holies behind that veil. 
And he went in there with blood. They were so scared that it was in the presence of God that they had little bells on his robe and they put a rope around his foot. Because they had to hear the bells move knowing he's still alive because he goes into the presence of God and no one can do that without blood. And if he fell and died in there, no one could go in because they would die. So they'd pull him out with a rope. Because that's how it was in those days. God was there. You could not go in. Only the priest once a year for the people with the blood. And what would he do with the blood? Can you remember? The Ark of the Covenant was in the Holy of Holies. What was in the Ark of the Covenant? The tablets with the ten words. The broken tablets with the ten words. The staff of Aaron that was blooming. And the manna. So when God looked into that, what did God see? He saw his word to teach his people. He saw the broken word. We'll talk about that in a second. He saw the staff reminding that he would always provide a leader for his people. He saw the manna reminding him of his provision for his people. So God saw his covenant. But God also saw when God looked in there, the ten words that were broken and reminded him of how his people were rebellious and made a golden calf. He saw the staff of Aaron reminding him that when he provided leaders, people said, no, we don't like them. We're not going to follow them. Also reminded them of their rebelliousness when God gave them food. And they said, we don't want this manna and quail stuff. Let's get back to Egypt. So when God looked into that, he saw his covenant and his faithfulness, but he saw the sin and rebellion of his people. So what did they do with the blood? They put it on the cover. Can you know, do you remember what the cover is called of the Ark of the Covenant? In Hebrew, it's called Kippuret. Kafar, Yom Kippur, Kippuret. The atonement seat. Because what would they do? All the stuff that God could see that reminded him of who we were, our sin, they put the blood on the atonement seat and it covers. And when God looks in, God only sees his covenant because that's what the blood does. It reconciles, brings a new relationship. It washes away that which stands between me and God. And yes, let's just say this. The sacrifice and the blood was not an angry God uh, wanting to be appeased by his people so that he would not get rid of them. That's Greek mythology. And Babylonian mythology, when they brought the sacrifices, the gods would come like flies. When God gave this symbol of the sacrifice and the blood, it's a holy God making a way for his children that he loves to come into the presence of the holy God and hear their father say, I love you, you're mine, you're covered in his blood. And that's where we come in. Listen to what Paul says in Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. And Katie, mine's going to sound different than yours because mine is the New Living Translation that I'm reading. For God, in all his fullness, was pleased to live in Christ. And through him, through Christ, God, here's your word, reconciled everything to himself. He made peace with everything in heaven and on earth. How? By means of Christ's blood on the cross. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Jesus came and brought his world into our world so that one day we can be taken into his world. And it happened in that moment on the cross when Jesus' blood just was flowing for us. Because what happened in that moment? Can you remember? It goes back to Leviticus 16. In the moment that Jesus died on that cross, the veil in the temple that separated the holy of holies from God's people, that curtain just tore away and that holy of holies was opened why by the blood of Jesus so that what can happen so that you and I can walk right into the presence of our father that I can walk in and say good morning father God and father God said good morning Aubrey how are you 
And I can say, Father God, I got some stuff going on in my life. And he says, sit down, let's talk. That's what happened because of the blood of Jesus. Because I don't have to walk in there like a scared sinner of what is the judgment of God going to be on me. The judgment happened on that cross. And on that cross, Colossians 2.14, God washed away all of that IOU that was written against me by my sin. And God washed it away by the blood of Jesus. My sins of yesterday, of today of tomorrow and all of the days to come when I stand before a holy God I am washed in the blood of Jesus and my father calls me son and it allows me to speak to him and he listens it allows me to mess up and he doesn't turn his back on me it allows me to fall flat on my face in the sin of my life and he picks me up and he says I know who you I love you you are washed and you are precious and you are mine Hebrews chapter 10 the most one of the most beautiful chapters in the Bible go read it this afternoon and so my dear brothers and sisters verse 19 of chapter 10 we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place. Why? Because of the blood of Jesus. That veil was torn and that veil is gone. My Father's place is open for me to walk in. Verse 20, by his death, Jesus opened a new life, giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a high priest, Jesus, who rules over God's house, look, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty consciences have been sprinkled. I told you I'll come back to that. Remember what I said, what they did with the sacrifice? They caught the blood, they took the hyssop branch, they dipped it in, and they sprinkled it to symbolize reconciliation. And Hebrews says, so let's go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting, for our guilty consciences have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean. And our bodies have been washed through our baptism with pure water. So let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope that we affirm. For God can be trusted to keep his promises. Will you hear that? You're welcome to walk into your father's presence. You're welcome to stand before him, not as a slave of sin, because you have been washed. And you can be who you are, for God can be trusted to keep his promise. When Moses came before God at the burning bush, God said, don't come close, separation. On Mount Sinai, separation. In the tabernacle, the curtain, separation. In the temple, the curtain, separation. And then Jesus came. And through the blood, there is no more separation for us. Romans 8, who can separate us from the love of God that there is in Christ Jesus? Nothing. Nothing in this world. Because we have been washed in the blood of the Lamb. Believe that, child of God. Believe that when Satan comes and sits and wants to convince you of something else. You have been washed. So this morning, there will be no animal sacrifice. Are you glad about that, Kimberly? There will be no animal sacrifice because all of these sacrifices were provisional and they had to be done over and over and over. But when my Lord Jesus opened his arms on that cross, once and for all, says the book of Hebrews chapter 10, once and for all, no more sacrifice to be brought. It has been done. There will be no altar but I will invite you to a table because Jesus changed that altar 
and transformed it into a table. A table in which he invites us and he says, come and share in my body and in my blood. For this is what I have done for you. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you to open that top lid and take out your piece of bread. And I'm sorry, these wafers don't taste nice. I know. But I didn't want to do a formal communion this morning. I wanted it to be a little more informal. And if you're visiting, and I know there's parents visiting today from from CCS uh, community, uh, and if you feel free to take communion in your church and you're with us this morning, this is a Jesus church. You're welcome to share with us in the body and the blood of Jesus. Can you just pray with me for a moment? Thank you, Lord Jesus, for reminding us And that night, when you would go to the cross, before you would go, you took bread and you broke the bread. And you said, this is my body and this is for you. And in a moment, Lord, we're going to take that little wafer and it's going to remind us of what you did. For we do not have animals to sacrifice Because God gave his best. And God sacrificed you on that cross for us, Lord Jesus, once and for all. Thank you for doing that. Thank you for setting us free. In your precious name we pray. Amen. If you have your piece of bread, we are reminded that the Lord Jesus took bread and he broke the bread and he said, this is my body, this is for you. It is broken for you so that we know that we will not be broken again. So will you please take your piece of bread and in a moment as you are ready, let's eat that bread together. For this is the body of Christ. Amen. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. So we're going to do this a little differently this morning, and that's why folks who are visiting, we always don't always do communion like this. Just today. I want you to think of what we said this morning of what the blood of Jesus means what the blood of Jesus does for us. And you can open your little cup when you are ready. And I want you to pray over that and just be quiet. And in your own time, decide when you are going to drink and say thank you to the Lord. Maybe there's something that you need to confess. Maybe there's something that's been bothering you in your heart. Maybe there's just something full of joy that you want to share with the Lord. Maybe you just want to be quiet. So pray over that little cup, reminding you that Jesus says, this is my blood, blood of the new covenant that is given to you as a perfect, perfect redemption for all of your sins. So in your own time, take a moment and share the blood of Christ.
a moment, we're going to sing nothing but the blood of Jesus. You don't have to stand. You can just sit there. And thank you, Scott and Catherine, for leading us. Thank you. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious. reminded us that Jesus said yes to us just as we are but it also reminds us that he then says allow me to make you new allow my spirit to come live in you and work through this life allow me to go into those little chambers that you hide away don't hide let me wash you. He said yes to you. This is our way of saying, yes, Jesus, I'm yours. Pray with me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. It is our privilege to thank